Oh, ah, ah, David, you busting ah, out the dance ah, floor. What's going on everybody? Welcome to a very, very, very special episode of Fun Bros Food. We are here with our old friend from Seattle, Gino Park. What's up guys, how you doing? So in today's video, we are gonna be eating a lot of Korean fast food. So you are also an R&B singer. Yes. These two, we used to perform together. Yeah. So uh, your, uh, the rap names. D1. D1. Oh man, back then it was English. English, English. <laughs> this is a throwback video. Uh, Korean, Korean fast, fast food. food, let's go. We are at Big Rice Cuisine, Temple City, it's round one. Round one, I feel like, how do you describe this round? I mean, we just have so much here. I mean, we've got the tteokbokki uh, with the seaweed roll, which I've never tried before, but I've it's never it's had drenched this in cheese, too. We've got four different kimbaps, right? Uh huh. We have kimchi fried rice in the tojirak. 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 Which is the lunch box. tin box. Yep. And then we got the seafood pancake. That's Hemur actually one Hemur, Hemur pajon. Hemur pajon. Yeah. Yeah. Last but not least, I mean, this is the most visually. Mm. My favorite. Yeah. Dog. It's the food that you get. Oh my. This is the army stew. It's army stew. I think first man. off, kimbap seems the easiest right, thing to start off with. But we're going kimbap. So I know kimbap, a lot of people eat this. Like, this is, I would say, a lot of people who have had any sort of Korean food have had this. You got the nice sesame oil taste to it yeah. at the very, very end. Because they rub that mm -hmm. sesame oil at the very end uh, on the seaweed. So yeah, you got kimchi kimbap. Kimbap and bibimbap kind of are like, it's the panchan, the side dishes rolled into different forms. Yeah, yeah. One's like a hot mix stone bowl, then one's kind of in a sushi type roll. Even with the word kim, kim means seaweed and then pop is rice. Mm -hmm. So that's why you get kimbap. And then bibimbap, kim means mix. And then uh, rice pop. I, I'll say this, despite the ingredients maybe being similar, it does taste different. I, I think I like the kimchi one even better than the bulgogi one. Oh, squid kimbap. kimbap. Pretty good, easy to eat. Um, no, probably fun. probably wouldn't go for it over the other ones. You know, this is very, very different too because usually with kimbap, you don't actually have roe in there. So I understand the whole like seafood type of thing with the squid and the roe, but yeah, definitely I've never had it with, with roe. With the roe, it definitely makes it look more like sushi. Tuna, Tuna kimbap. kimbap. I actually like it with the sauce for me. I actually like it without the sauce. Hmm. I think with the sauce sometimes, like the red, like I think that's kind of a gochu song mm -hmm. based sauce. It kind of makes, to me, everything taste like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it lets the ingredients shine. That's I'm rolling with good. tuna, kimchi, then bulgogi, and then squid. I'm, I'm going traditional bulgogi, you got the kimchi, you got the squid, then tuna's actually my last. Wow. It tastes very American, yeah, actually. Yeah, that is true. Army, Army stew, who did you get? get? This dish, you know, comes from the American army having a lot of canned foods, uh, Koreans making it work. The Korean uh, economy wasn't doing that well, so they saw an opportunity to mix everything together during the Korean War, so that's where this came from. Yo, the hot dogs and the Spam came from the soldier rations from the American army. And then I also learned, and I read this, that Lyndon B. Johnson, the president at the time, right after the Korean War, he came over and ate this in Korea, and he oh, said this really? was his favorite dish from Korea. You know what's funny? Because I'm usually eating this dish really late at night with soju yeah. and in a very loud setting. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of different to just eat it kind of at home, like in a homely, chill, casual spot. Mm -hmm. So they have um, fried dumplings. Uh, these are mandus. It looks like a Chinese dumpling, but you guys deep fry it. And uh, we only pan fry. This is this is deep fried. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely an American twist to it as well, too. Because with budetchi, you usually you just put the mandu in there. Oh. So this is the first time I've actually had it more fried. Oh, I got to cool it down. You hyping this up? You have to try You're this. Come back. I've never had grape pulp before. This has grape pulp. <laughs> uh, this is actually one of my favorites. Uh, it's uh, pirakshike, and it's actually rice. It's a rice drink. But it's usually drank as a refreshing drink, uh, usually in the uh, the saunas is what we call it, the spas. Oh, I saw immediately, this is blowing up right now. A lot of people in America are really finding out about this uh, bingere banana milk. Oh. So I think this is a good mix with anything that's spicy though. I think it cools everything down. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely what I would drink when it's like really, really spicy. But I would say shike is still my favorite. <laughs> shike. Shike. Don't be much Seaweed roll. It's got noodles in there. This is good. Did you, you never had that, right? Mm -mm. I never had this. 
It's like seaweed and noodles wrapped in seaweed and fried. Mm -hmm. oh, I got you. Oh, with udon. So, so this is different too. It's with udon. And then you got that mozzarella cheese on top. Let me tell you, there's a lot of rice flour in this dish. Now, what's the difference between like this dish and then this dish? They look pretty similar. Obviously, they have the both like the same shade of red. Yeah, to me, this tasted way more like almost like Western. Yeah, like pasta. It's a little bit more thick too because you're using like the tteokbokki with the rice and then this one especially because it's with udon. So when you start marinating that all together, then you start getting like that thick broth. That's why you, you can see it's actually a lot more thick. Mm. And then with the stews, you're using a different type of broth, so that's why it's a lot more lighter. Hamur pajang. There's less of that like squiddy tentacle look yeah. and almost more like something that maybe the younger generation could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just visually more pleasing. That's a very that's accessible it. looking pancake. Uh, yeah. Oh, I like the spicy sauce right there. I'm gonna eat it without, huh? There's squid in there too. I, is that, is that what the red thing is? That, that, no, that's fish cake. I love that layer of egg that he's got on top, man. That's thick. That's a thick pancake. Kimchi fried rice. Kimchi bokkeumbap. What makes a good kimchi bokkeumbap? You know, honestly, with a lot of Korean food, the key ingredient is sesame oil. Not a lot of people know that. Because right, they probably think it's them. gochujang, right? Yeah, Immediately. Yeah, they think it's something different, but yeah, sesame oil definitely on, on fried rice or the kimbap, that's what really makes it. Mm. It's actually in the budichig as well, too. It's in the tteokbokki. It's just the one ingredient people don't think about. I felt like oh, today, in this round, what we had is there was a lot of modern twists on traditional dishes. Mm -hmm. Like, um, we were reading up on the history of um, jjigae, and obviously, bude jjigae being this American ingredient fused style that's relatively new maybe like 50 60 years old yeah but then obviously i'm sure that a kimchi stew existed for hundreds of years prior to that yeah yeah, yeah. and obviously it, it over time changed to putting cheese on everything mm -hmm. that's like kind of a modern twist nowadays within like the last last five seven years yeah. what was your guys's favorite thing I, I actually really straight up i liked everything i'm i'm still going with the puda chicken it's got a little okay. bit of a different twist. You got the fried dumplings in there, the mandu as well, and then you got the cheese mixing with okay. the spam, one of my favorites, and then the sausage. Just put everything together. I I gotta go with the boudé jigae, but a close is actually the tuna roll without the sauce. Oh, that's interesting. Without the <laughs> sauce, no <laughs> sauce. <laughs> Gina's like, that's, that's the last thing I want. See, see, see Gina's like, oh, I agree oh, with you, man. <laughs> see, like the spam, but what, you going against the tuna? You like one canned meat over yeah, another canned meat? I'm biased. I'm tuna, biased. that might come from the American army too. I mean, the tuna can, I mean, the chicken of the sea, that's probably an American can. Only food. give Gina from now on in this video the tuna kimbap and the, and the banana milk. <laughs> this is a really interesting section. We have some Chinese Korean dishes. In Korea, they're referred to as Korean Chinese dishes. Correct. But then in China, we don't eat them. Because oh, that's true. I, didn't, I didn't know that. Well, no, we, we, we eat the, we eat the original version. Jajangmyeon. The Jajangmyeon, it is Chinese in origin. Obviously, uh, all over China, they have their own style. Um, this most uh, aesthetically looks like the northern style Jajangmyeon. Jajangmyeon, which means fried sauce noodle. And then in Korean, it's more with a J. Ja. If you have the Chinese northern version, the fermented soybean flavor, which is still, I believe, the same flavor, yeah. is much sharper. It's much more sharper and like almost like hardcore fermented beany. Like this sharp and like sweet? Or stronger. It's a stronger. It's a, no, no, not sweet. It's not much. Still. It's much, uh, it's much saltier and much stronger. Wow. Yeah. I always thought, I, I like the Korean jajamyeon, but I didn't think it tasted that similar to the jajamyeon that I ate growing up. I actually really enjoy this too. You know what's funny? This is, this David, is really smooth. It's, 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 it's really funny because you know how strong the, the Chinese jajamyeon sauce is? They give you a tiny little bowl. They give you this much sauce for this much noodles. Mm -hmm. So that's how strong it is versus, so it barely covers the noodles, but this yeah, is obviously, it. yeah, it's a lighter sauce, but they give you a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. This is actually definitely uh, a to-go type of thing as well too. A lot of college students would definitely eat this. And that's fair because it kind of has a similar place in Chinese culture. It's not the fanciest food. It's a home food. Champong. So this is champong. This is uh, actually out of all the quote-unquote Chinese dishes, um, this is actually my favorite. You know what the interesting thing is? The version of the Fujinese dish called champong in Japan, mm. not spicy. Mm. It's clear. Because mm. you know Japanese people, they're not really into generally, mm -hmm. for the most part, red colored thing. You can really taste the seafood in the broth. Man. This is actually my first time really having a good version of this. Like not like your 24 hour after the club spot. Man, that was really good. What do, what do you think makes a good champong? It's gotta be the, the umami that all the different seafoods in the broth create. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. It's definitely the broth. It's got, it's different because you don't just have the essence of the seafood, but you also have the meats that are mixed in together too. So you see little meat chunks right in there. 
but it just wraps everything all around together. Tang Su Yu, sweet and sour pork. Mm -hmm. What I notice about the batter is that it looks more like the white tempura batter, more the one that the Chinese people have. There are pieces here are more slivers than some other places like it more like a chunk. There's not as Definitely. much nuggets. Mm -hmm. The pieces are so thin. Like a chicharron almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It almost tastes like a yeah, chicharron, a sweet chicharron. It's like a cracker. That sauce is really good. Just about to comment on the sauce, the sweet and sour part. Very, very good. There's something more fruity about it. I don't know if you put like pineapples in it or something, but. So of your three, you're going with champong. Champong for sure. Champong for sure. I feel like it, it's like, it takes the longest to make too, mm -hmm. just to create that broth. So I, I just like the process as well. I gotta say that I actually never had a version of champong that I liked oh, until really? today. Oh, yeah. really? Because I haven't, I don't eat, I, I usually actually, when I go get Korean food, I get Korean Korean food. Yeah. Like, cause Korean Chinese food to me sounds almost like, it seems kind of weird, because I'm just like, oh, I don't know, I recognize all these things. But yeah, yeah, really. yeah. I'm, today, for sure, I'm going with that. Yeah. But I gotta say, that's a close second. Okay. And I really like the sauce on it. Mm -hmm. I would, would you say the one difference I've seen with other spots is that, like, some people's, uh, their sauce is really dense, and but this place, I felt like the sauce, the sweet sauce was a little bit more liquidy. Yeah, I would say it's a lot more thicker in, in some of the other places I've been to, because it's, it's just, like, comes off right away. I'm telling you, really addicting, though, for some reason. Chop che. What makes a good chop che, in your opinion? I'm, you, still, I'm still going with the sesame. Yeah, no, you're right, it has a strong sesame flavor. Yeah. Okay. Is this something you could, your parents would make at home? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What's also a little bit different because the glass noodles are a lot softer than your normal chop chai. I'm not gonna lie, I will order it if it, if it didn't come as a pan chop. Oh, you know what was interesting is that they didn't, he didn't use a wok to cook that one, but he used a wok to cook this one. Oh, that's, that's, that's a little different too. Yeah. Bibimbap. You know, this feels really light. Mm -hmm. Very refreshing. Mm -hmm. A lot of sesame oil. And I realized why I think this is the most popular dish in America from Korean cuisine. What? Because in Seattle, a lot of the Japanese teriyaki spots are actually owned by Koreans, probably mm. 85, 90%. Mm. But here's the thing, they will always have like one or two Korean things on the menu. And bibimbap Definitely. will always be one of them. Just think about it, if you have like that, the panchan or the appetizers, all you have to do is put in one of these two, and that's how you make the dish. Mm. More than man, Korean buckwheat cold noodles. Perfect to eat oh. at the end, man. You know, this is one of the dishes, though, funny enough, and I don't know the history of this one. We eat this in China, too, in certain provinces. Mm. But in a lot of places, it's called chow xian no mian. Chow xian means Korean Chinese people noodles. Oh, interesting. So actually, I don't necessarily like mundi men. But this one I actually really like, and the reasons why I don't like other mundi men is because when you look at this noodle, it actually separates apart. A lot of the mulling mans that I, I've eaten before, the noodle like sticks together. Oh, it's and chewy. It's chewy. You gotta so, go at it, yeah, right? So when you first start, you're like literally like mixing it. This actually just separated apart so easily. Good point. Good and that's point. the reason why I, I really agree. No, that is a good point. You can be stuck on chewing it almost like gum yeah, sometimes. This is soft. I, I was really shocked to, to even like taste that. That's crazy. What was you guys' favorite dish here at Big Rice, man? <sighs> I'm, I'm going with the Buddha chicken still. I'm, I'm biased on that maybe. Got that spam in there for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it probably takes the longest to make. Yeah, no, it was really good. I mean, I did, I ate all of it. I ate all of it. Because I've had bude jjigae before. Okay. But I've never had a good Korean champong. Jump, okay. Yeah. yeah. Jump, I've never had a good Korean champong. That was, that was the best one. The, the tapoki with the mozzarella. That was good, that yeah. was really good. But this is even another level of mm -hmm. like, really accessible, nice Korean food. That's, 20 year old. That's not expensive, but it still gives you like this new experience. I mean, most places do not serve this. Mm -hmm. Most places do not serve this dish, and it's actually really hard to find this jajangmyeon. Yeah, I think it really has to tell you that like, we're in like a Chinese area, but the levels of, Korean culture that have become so popular in the, amongst yeah. Chinese people, it's just gone layer after layer after layer. It used to only be Korean barbecue, then the Sundaboos came in, and now you're starting to see the Jajangmyeon's and the, every jump on the variations. Yeah. You know, to me, this restaurant really is like kind of normalizing regular Korean food mm -hmm. because it's not like something you have to go out and oh, go to all you can eat, and then you can have your japchae out of the the bar as a uh, side dish and stuff. But this is like a everyday spot. Like, oh, come here for lunch, yeah. get fueled up yeah. on Korean. Food. And that's not, I wouldn't say that's not usually how you think of it, at least in this area. Yeah, it's simple with great taste. And that's how it really describes like more of the lunch style food uh, for Korea. But I mean, sometimes you'll see these foods like on the street. All right, you guys, we, I gotta check out street churros. I'm down. Yeah. 
All right, wrapping up our Korean fast food series with our friend Jinu Park. They brought churros to Asia, street churros. It started in Korea. Obviously, originally a Mexican dish. Right, sure. That's interesting. So you have this, to, this, you this is the original. This is the original. She said this is the most popular flavor. It's just cinnamon. It's a oh. cinnamon churro. So oh, I'm going with Oreo first. No I'm batter. Wow. Okay, so we got the honey nut strawberry over here. So honey nut is on the outside. That's the sprinkles. Yo, that's good. This churro is a lot smaller than the original stick one. Mm -hmm. It's easier to eat. Yo, how does it compare with like a very traditional Mexican churro? I'm gonna be honest, it's good. It's easier to eat because of the size and it's really fresh, but taste-wise, it doesn't taste that different. Mm. 